And now David will give us our scripture for this morning. Today's scripture is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were assembled with one accord. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues which were divided like flames of fire, and they rested upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in various languages according to whatever the Spirit gave them to speak. Now there dwelt at Jerusalem devout men and Jews from every nation under heaven. And as the sound took place, all the people gathered together, and they were confused, because every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And they were all amazed and stunned, saying to one another, What does this mean? Others mocked, saying, These men are full of new wine. And afterwards, Simon Peter stood up together with the eleven disciples and lifted up his voice and said to them, Men of Jewish race and all that dwell at Jerusalem, let this be known to you and hearken to my words. For these men are not drunken as you suppose, for behold, it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my men servants and upon my maidservants will I pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this very Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they heard these things, their hearts were touched, and they said to Simon and the rest of the apostles, O oh, our brethren, what shall we do? Then Simon said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Lord Jesus, for the remission of sins, so that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise was made to you and to your children, and for all those who are far off, even as many as the very God shall call. And he testified to them with many other words and besought them, saying, Save yourselves from this sinful generation. And among these men among whom, and those men among them who readily accepted his word and believed were baptized. And about 3,000 souls were added in that day. And they continued steadfastly in the teaching of the apostles, and they took part in prayer and in the breaking of bread. And now, Reverend Macaulay will give us our lesson sermon. Well, good morning. This is Pentecost Sunday, and some of us are wearing red to symbolize the tongues of fire that landed on the apostles. In this morning's scripture, we heard verses about Pentecost. Every year at this time, I hear about how wonderful this time of year is. And every year when I hear about Pentecost, I go into a state of confusion. When I was growing up, I recall having a friend who introduced me to the Pentecostal church. She told me about the speaking in tongues, being overcome by the Holy Spirit, and the healings that took place. Of course, I also saw the movie Marjo about the infamous child preacher who took his show on the road from town to town, especially throughout the South, and swindled lots of people out of their hard-earned cash. In college, I had the opportunity to attend a Pentecostal revival where I heard a preacher teach his lesson, the call for those who need healing to come forward and remove their crutches, their hearing aids, their glasses, and many of these people received momentary healings. But all who had been healed needed their crutches, their glasses, and their hearing aids back the next day. There was speaking in tongues, but what I heard was not discernible as any foreign language, but rather simply gibberish. The preacher was a real-life Marjo, but in this case, the preacher was an adult. I came away feeling slighted 
in that these people had done everything possible to get me to buy into what seemed to me as their conspiracy to get me to purchase their snake oil. In addition, I've watched many documentaries which have covered the Pentecostal Church, including the story of Amy Semple McPherson, who established the first Foursquare Church. I recall her message that her mother couldn't stand the sound of clinking coins in the offering baskets, and that she preferred to receive dollar bills that didn't make any noise. In all fairness, Amy's overall message was a good one, and her church is still strong today, many years after her passing, and continues to attract many who need that message. I also recall seeing the spectacle of the Pentecostal church documentaries of how congregations speak in tongues. I recall seeing, what I recall seeing were children as well as adults uttering verbal nonsense, which to be honest, always alienated me. My understanding of the process of speaking in tongues as explained in the Bible verses this morning, suggests that people who were gathered in the upper room praying felt the rush of wind come upon them, which signified the presence of the Holy Spirit, and they began to relate the message of Jesus. Only when they spoke, they spoke in languages they didn't understand, but that could be, but those languages could be understood worldwide by anyone listening in their own native tongue. In other words, someone who spoke Aramaic but didn't know Greek might start uttering the lesson in Greek so that a Greek person would hear and understand the lesson. The examples I had seen of speaking in tongues in the Pentecostal church were simply gibberish and didn't appear to be discernible to anyone. Now, I don't want today's lesson to be about bashing or condemning those of the Pentecostal faith. Certainly every religious group has something to offer its followers. And I'm amazed at how varied and diverse the Pentecostal movement has become. One thing I learned in researching today's lesson was that Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after Easter Sunday to commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples of Christ. Pentecost is also related to the Jewish harvest of Shavuot, which commemorates God giving the Ten Commandments to Moses at Mount Sinai 50 days after the Exodus. Among Christians, Pentecost is often referred to as the birthday of the church. So, in fact, the Pentecostal movement in Christianity derives its name from this dramatic biblical event. I suppose if I were going to start a church, Pentecost would be the perfect inspirational event. In our scripture reading, we heard that, that on the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place which was the same upper room where the Last Supper had taken place. They heard a noise from heaven, like the sound of a mighty wind. And then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions, and a tongue came and settled upon each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone, and they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak, so that visitors to Jerusalem actually heard the prophecies in their own languages. We're told that the scripture said that the Apostle Peter preached a sermon that day to about 3,000 people who believed his message and were baptized that day. So I guess one of the messages this morning is not to confuse two different words that sound similar. Pentecost has come to represent a time of celebration, festivities, and feasting in remembrance of Christ's resurrection.